Okay. Hello, everybody. This is Elisa, and welcome to another session of Empower Conversation and Cut and Unfiltered Experience Life the Way It Is. And speaking of experience life the way it is, we have Siobhan Barnes with us from Hong Kong, and she is living in Hong Kong now. And she <laughs> is experience life, experiencing life the way it is. We were talking about our careers, our life early, and both of us had a one year of a mid midlife crisis, one year of a break, and so. Sometimes, if you're a control freak, you might not enjoy this because you really have to go with the flow. So, without further ado, let's warmly welcome Shivan. How are you, Shivan? I'm really well. Thank you for having me today. I'm really excited to be here. So, tell us more about you. What do you do? Who? What do I do? Mm. So, um, as you mentioned before, I've kind of been going through this a bit of a not crisis, but a real identity change in terms of where business is going, but. The core of what I do is help women figure out what it is they're here to do through their careers, whether mm -hmm. that's to stay in a corporate career, whether that's to start your own business, whether that's to start a passion project, write a book. Um, that's really what I help women with. And my business is the Neon Life Society, which is all about supporting women to band together and be role models for mm -hmm. other women to go out there and do the same thing. So you talked about finding your life purpose through your career or not. So do you think one has to really quit their jobs to live their purpose or find their purpose? No, I definitely don't think so. I think when I started on early in business, I thought that was the case because that's what I myself had done. Um, but what I've come to realize working with clients and you know in my own personal journey is that it's not about the specific action that you take in terms of do you start a business? Do you stay in corporate? Do you write a book? You know, everybody will give you their two cents in terms of like what they think it is that you should do. And that's based on their experiences. Mm. What it comes down to is listening to that little quiet seed of a voice. And I think it does start off as this little mustard seed inside mm -hmm. that tells you you're going in the right direction or you're not going in the right direction. So when I was in corporate, I got a very quiet you know, seed of a voice telling me you're not in the right place. You shouldn't have taken this job. I did tell you that before we started, but you decided to take it, but you're not in the right place. And it took me like health issues and, you know, lots of different challenging situations with colleagues and things like that to realize I was in the wrong place. And so what I think is important is for women to think about when they're going through like, what's my life purpose? What am I here to do? It's not about having to find that outside of yourself. Mm. And it's not about, okay, go start a business and then you'll find your purpose and you'll be happy. Actually, the best thing you can do is to stop, get quiet, look at what's happening in your life and know that it, I mean, it sounds cheesy, but it's truly happening for you and not to you. And ask yourself, okay, what's the next direction that mm. I'm going to be moving in? What's the next step to take? And start to trust that intuition. And I think when you cultivate that, and you practice that self-belief and faith in listening to that positive intuition, which is different to the ego and, you know, mm -hmm. the, the fears, that's when you start to align to your purpose. And that's when you start to show up and you do what's right in front of you mm -hmm. with your whole heart and with passion and with excitement. So I've got a question. If, like, if you were in the job that you actually love, would you have quit? No, I would have stayed for sure. And I think... I, you know, I look back on my career and I had two, two major jobs and both of them, you know, I learned so much and I'm grateful for those opportunities and, you know, all the experiences that I got from that. But, you know, I think looking back, there were definitely things that perhaps I could have done to be a bit happier in that role. There was a little, you know, I was in my twenties, right? So there was a lot of, uh, you know, uh, oh, my company is not doing this or, you know, they could be doing more of that. But if I looked you know, and got honest with myself and looked inside, I think I could have also done a bit more. Like mm. I could have been more proactive and said, hey, you know, there's nothing about women's leadership in this organization. Let's do something about this. Can I start something? And that would have brought me closer to having a bit of purpose in my career. So I think I could have done things to be happy in mm. my corporate job if I had chosen to. And, you know, who knows where life takes you, right? Never say never, right? You never know, maybe in 10 years time, that is the path to go back to corporate. Who knows? Right now, I'm very happy where I'm at. But I think you've got to follow, again, your intuition and trust where you're being guided to serve and where you're being guided to, to show up. 
Mm -hmm. So this one year of identity crisis or change of identity, how did it all started? It all started when I fell pregnant with my third child. <laughs> um, so my son just turned one. So mm -hmm. it's no coincidence that it's been this past year where I've been like, whoa, what's happening? Um, but I think I had my spiritual awakening when I was pregnant with my son. I mean, the whole process was um, a divine download. Like mm -hmm. I didn't think I wanted a third kid. And then, you know, I did desperately and then felt somebody was missing. And I think being pregnant with him actually led me to really take a good look at my life mm -hmm. and my business and say, okay, what am I looking to achieve here? Because in all honesty, in the beginning of my business, I think I just recreated similar patterns for my corporate job, right? Mm. Like hustle, show up, you know, do the hours, kids are in bed, I'm going to be working late at night. And that's I what we were taught, it. isn't it? That's, it is. that's what we were all <laughs> taught the same structure and system. Yeah, exactly. And look, for some people, that's great. That's what they they thrive off, you know, but I think the whole point, and I think you're the same, Elise, it's like, the whole point of starting this business isn't necessarily to be hustling all the time. It is also to allow some time to be creative, to spend, you've got three children as well, to be there for your kids. And so that's what this year has been about, really. It's like, okay, let me get crystal clear, like what is working, what's not, and what do I want to be creating going forward? And the more you are on this spiritual or personal development journey, I think, hmm. you know, it's, it's also about modeling a certain way of being to your kids as well. And I take that really seriously because yeah. mine is still little, like one, three, and five. So I think values are set by the time they're seven or something. So I'm trying to be conscious as well of like how I want to be showing up and what I'm teaching them through my actions and not just my my words. So that's been the 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 roller coaster of the year. Um, and I'm curious, what's it been like for you? For the year that yeah. has Oh man, you know, usually every before the year ends, I would be guided to kind of like do the reevaluation, what do I want to do next year and that kind of thing. So usually within two to three months, I would have figured it out. But last year, interestingly, by no coincidence, it was the year of completion, right? 2016 was the year of completion because two plus one plus six is nine. And in the cycle of numerology, I have to explain this just in case people don't get it. It's the ninth cycle, and so it's a year of completion, and so now is the year of the beginning. So mm. I was guided to stop business coaching in June or July, and I'm like, oh, shit, what am I going to do? So the natural plan B was to go back to my spiritual path that I know how to do so well, but it wasn't feeling it. It's not clicking. Yeah, It's not like click, 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 click. You know, it wasn't yeah. clicking, but it was just for survival and trying to figure out who you are, mm. trying to figure out who I am. And so, and I thought six months has passed. That's it. I've gotten it. <laughs> but still, it wasn't clicking. It wasn't until like two weeks ago that I fell into a major, not major, but two weeks kind of, it's pretty major, two weeks, two, three weeks is major illness, fever bug, that, that I kind of like relived my fears and the fears were gone. And I kind of like boiled down to, hey, I want to help women to become who they've always wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, it's about knowing what your aim, what your results are, what, what are you here for, what do you want to help? Because I lost the passion for coaching. And yeah. I think you shared with me early on as well, you did. Because coaching mm -hmm. is a tool. Coaching is not a lifestyle, which yeah. so many people are saying, you know, you know, come coach, you can fly first class or make $500,000 a month. But I think it's more than that. And that, as I've shared with you, so I... You know, being on this journey for such a long time, it's been 10 years, but the fears keep showing up. The moment you think that you're done with this lesson, it actually showed up again. Like, I thought I'm done with this, right? Yeah. And I think like, there's always another layer, right? Yeah. You go, you're like, oh, I didn't get that, that part. Yeah. 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 And then the fears came up again. I was living in so much fear once again that I just had to just, like, stop it. Mm. And so once I stopped it, I had the space to then think about who I want to be and yeah. what I really want to create. Mm -hmm. And so my new blog is born, as I've shared with you early on. And Looks gorgeous. Thank you. And um, I've been sharing with all my entrepreneurial female friends to start the same way I just shared with Shiva. <laughs> just to keep things really simple. I think we overcomplicate yeah. things, don't you think? 
Oh, absolutely. And at the end of the day, it doesn't have to be that hard. And you can see all this hype on the internet, like you have to follow like 16 step plan to get to this. It's, it's not the case. And that's why you have to come back to, okay, what is it that feels right to you? And what's your approach going to be? Because what's right for someone else is not necessarily going to be right for you. But sometimes you've got to go through that journey of following mm-hmm. someone else to kind of like find yourself. So there's no, it's not a wasted time. But I, yeah. but you know, earlier I shared with you how simple my new blog is. You're like, what? I know, it looks amazing. <laughs> You've inspired me. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. sometimes we forget is to keep things really, really simple. And, you mm. know, talking about, you know, unfollowing the system, what has it been like for you? Was it scary? You know, like... Yeah, you know, I, I'm always a person who kind of wants to keep up and like be doing and be active. Like one of my strengths is like the achiever. So I like, like every day I start at zero and I want to like accomplish a lot. Um, and so when it comes to keeping up with things, I think I've, it's been difficult to let go and say, okay, you know what? It's, I don't have to follow their path to success. I can do it my way. I can do it um, in my own pace. And what I've come to learn is that actually when you slow down and you focus and do one thing really well first and then move on to the next thing and then move on to the next thing, that is way more fulfilling and you're actually going to get much further along than trying to do a million different things at once. And I'm still, that is one of my lessons. I still find myself doing it. I love to learn. That's another one of my strengths. But, you know, so I'm always doing courses and it's like, okay, how can I focus on one thing, bring one thing in at a time rather than like, trying to learn a million different things so I'm definitely not a master at it I'm still learning I still get tripped up um, but it's a journey and so I'm trying to also practice some self-forgiveness and compassion for when I do mess up because I'm sure it'll happen again (laughs) for sure for sure so you said being a mother Mm. helped you in your journey in your business Mm -hmm. so do you think if without if you weren't a mother you would be still the same person (laughs) it's a good question it's a really good question and that's something I've had a bit of a limiting belief around as well right because I would you know we've I've been in programs and you know the same mentors as I do and you know I'll see the young ones right the millennials who are like got all the time in the world and you know all the energy and I'm like damn you know like I don't have the same amount of time because I've got other priorities right and so I um that has always, that has been a limiting belief of mine for the longest time. Like I don't have as much time as, you know, some people, so I'm not going to be as successful as they are, right? Something to that effect. But Mm -hmm. what I've come to realize and what I'm starting to make peace with is that it's not about like how fast you do something and it's not about how much money you make. It's actually, again, as cheesy as it sounds, like the person you become in the process. And you know, thankfully, I've got friends and family around me who are able to reflect back and say, you know, you've changed this last year. And these are the you know, the good things I see. And maybe these are some of the things that you're still like, falling short. But I think being a parent has really slowed me down to just not always be in that go, go, go mentality. Mm-hmm. And to really think about how I want to be in the world because there's so much emphasis about how what you should be doing right like you've got to achieve you've got to do you've got to have certain things but at the end of the day like you've got to be that person at the beginning like that's what everything has to come from so if I'm stressed out and trying to get all my work done and I'm like shouting at my kids that's not a great way to be I have to learn to be there with my kids and, you know, be in flow with my business. And that's been a great lesson for me. And I think it's really helped to round out my kind of overthinking brain that likes yeah. to keep going. It's not yeah. easy if you yeah. have How do you find it? and business at the same time. Uh, it's not easy. And I don't think there's such a thing called work-life balance. I think you just find the balance in every moment mm. to just be at peace with at that moment you know so there's a lot of talk about being now and stop doing Mm. but being takes time to Mm. actually know who you are so do you think you are the woman that you've always wanted to be now (laughs) Hmm. I think I'm getting closer I think it's like literally like a snail like little little forward steps but then you know I'll do something or something will happen where I'm like oh that was not the best side of me like that's that's you know 
um, some area for me to learn and some area for me to grow. But I think that also brings up a good point that you do need to incorporate some stillness right into your life. Like you can't always be doing, you can't always be achieving. And I don't know about your audience, but my audience, the women that I tend to attract are women who are always working, doing everything for everybody else. And they're always busy. And so there is no time to stop, reflect and be like, Mm. okay, where am I? How am I feeling today? Like even this happened recently, even this, this week, our kids, and myself, we've been out with a bug, like sleep the whole day, like really dead tired. And even my husband reflected back to me. He's like, you know, you need to stop and you need to take care of yourself. Like you can't, you can't do this anymore. And I was like, wow, I thought I was better at this. But, you know, I think there are always moments to sort of come back and say, okay, how, how am I being? Like, how can I stop and like check back in with myself if things are working or if things aren't? Mm. So how has this new identity changed the way you do your business? Gosh, I think it's still a, an evolution. It's still a work in progress. But um, going forward, it's less pushing and less striving and less having to adhere to the marketing gurus in terms of what they say I should be doing. Are you unfollowing following the strategies? <laughs> uh, I, I guess I can put it this way. I'm like, this is the difference. So before I would be like, okay, I'm going to follow five people on marketing. And then, you know, obviously they've all got different views, right? So I then know you have spent so much money on like learning how to run a business. It's insane. Yeah, it is insane, right? It is. And so, and where I think it's important is to come back and be like, okay, how do I want to do this? Like, what is the end goal here? And rather than it be like, you know, hit, $10,000 a month or like, you know, have a platform with a million people. It's for me, it's like, okay, how do I want to impact people? And so for me, I've got ideas of like workshops, um, events in Hong Kong, like more t- teachers, teacher training, like trainings, like actually giving people some tools to work with, you know, on their own, not necessarily with me. And so then I reverse engineer. I'm like, okay, so then who can help me fulfill this mission? Mm. And then I'm like, okay, who do I resonate with? And then I trust that person's advice which is a bit different to before where I would just kind of give power away I'm like they say I start a business and like you know live a laptop lifestyle and go follow them and then it doesn't feel in alignment it's like okay obviously it doesn't just very I was just sharing with somebody the laptop lifestyle is just Instagram picture very like (laughs) like like picture perfect yeah but I said but honestly do you really want to have like your laptop by the beach and work no you want to enjoy the beach and have margaritas right like exactly. why do you want to work by the beach? Yeah. exactly exactly so i think it's um yeah the laptop lifestyle it, it's it's the shiny object syndrome and it's the perceived it has, thing it has a lot it has fooled a lot of us the hmm. glamorous side yeah but every i think we we all know better, right? And it goes back to that intuition and that inner voice. All of us are like, we have that like bullshit meter up. We're like, surely it can't be that easy. But part of us wants to believe it because we want that. And then lifestyle. we, be- yes, we want that lifestyle, and then we just go after it. And then to realize that it's, it's you can't just make thirty k in thirty days overnight, or you can't just become successful overnight. You can, but it's just the amount of work that you need to put in before you make thirty k in thirty days. Yeah. And like taking a good, honest look in terms of like, I say this to my clients and I had a gut check with myself the other day is like, you know, think about how long you've been working in a certain career of yours. Maybe you went to university, maybe you worked your way up from, you know, entry level graduate, and then you got to director. Obviously, if you're going to switch careers or you're going to change something, there's something to be said for mastering your craft. You need to be good at something. Mm -hmm. And when you're good at something, you also build the confidence and hopefully you're good at something that also lights you up. Like that's that's an important intersection as well. But we got to be real. Like, do we have it all comes down to value? Like how much value are you adding to people with your skill set? If you're really good at it, you've practiced it, you're confident, then go for it. Like you can charge the crazy amounts of money. Right. But if you're still learning or you're, you know, still in the early stages, I think there's something to be said for being patient with the journey and being like, this is where I'm at right now. I'm not Oprah Winfrey. I'm not Tony Robbins. I'm not Gabby Bernstein. That's okay. You know, I'll get to my, you know, whoever woman I'm meant to be, right? Like your message, but it doesn't have to be today. Mm. And what's the freaking rush anyway? Yes. Seriously. Yes. What is the rush? Yes. You brought up a good point. Like the traditional system, 
is you go to primary school, secondary school, JC or something, and you go to the university, you get a job, you start from the bottom, and then you climb the ladder. I'm not saying that that's right or wrong, but then then you be, then you want to become the C of the company. It also takes time, time for mm. promotion, time to do your part. And it might take 20 years to become the CEO of a company that makes $5 million a year, right? Mm. Yeah. But then suddenly when we start our own business, we suddenly expect to make seven figures in three years or in a year. Yeah. Very yeah. unrealistic expectation and we drive ourselves crazy. And when mm. there's so much out there saying, if you don't make seven figures, there's something wrong with you. If you can't make 10,000, there's something wrong with you. And there's so many people struggling with, with this. Yeah. And I think sometimes feeling like the pressure to have to get to a certain milestone by a certain time frame, it can stop you from even making a step because mm. you're like, I'm so far, it's going to take forever. Why bother? And then that mental energy, like the flip-flopping between I want to do this, but I'm not good enough. It's so far. I mean, that is draining and, you know, it, it, it detracts us from what we're here to do. So and my point is about like, you know, it doesn't have to take forever. And, you know, we don't have to take years and years, but I think some time and realistic dedication to mastering our strengths and mastering mm. our craft is important and it's often overlooked yeah especially in marketing because they just want you to get make the money which is great but you know there's a balance between the two I think that's why so many people are burned and hurt because they got sucked into the great marketing but the mm. coach hasn't mastered her skill mm. and just because God gave you a gift it doesn't mean that you're perfect at the gift it's just yeah. the tip of the iceberg yeah, and you have to go continue deep. to grow. Oh, for sure, for sure. And like, I think it takes time to cultivate the different skill sets. So that's something I've been doing in my business. I'm like, okay, I'm really clear on how I want to help people. And now I'm like more proactive in terms of like, okay, I think I could have better tools to help with this block that I see. And then boom, I add, I'm like, okay, I'm going to study this so that I have something. And you know, also when you practice more and more, your confidence builds and people feel that and energetically there's a different vibration and you can't then underestimate you can charge, that too. Then you can charge the big bucks because yeah. you actually help people cut their time in transformation. At the beginning, you might take six months, but now you can take three sessions, go mm -hmm. ahead and charge for it because you're helping people sh shortcut their time of trans transformation. But yes. first, you have to transform. And I think mm -hmm. that is the reason so many people are burned and hurt in the coaching industry because you know, it's not, how should I say this? They spent so much money, but they didn't get what they, but I think it's like, you just get the lesson. You might not get what you think you, you have, you know, paid for, but you definitely mm. do get that lesson that you need. Yeah, definitely. And you know, it's funny. I was at the uh, Asia yoga conference last weekend and um, I went to a Kundalini yoga um, session with Guru Jagat and I'm just starting to play with Kundalini yoga and, you know, she's been practicing. She practiced with Yoga Baj Yogi Bhajan. She's got the center at Rama TV and all that good stuff. And, you know, at the very start of the session, she was saying, you can only give your practice. You can't give anything else. And it was just such a good reminder that you're right. Like, you know, it's same with, you know, us as coaches or whatever definition, blogger, teacher, we, healer we want to use. We can only be as good a conduit for facilitating transformation for others if we ourselves are doing the work and if we're showing up we're up leveling we're we're doing all of this stuff so I thought that was such a great reminder like keep keep at it and you've got to show up every day and, and keep keep going yeah I think you talked about you mentioned the word up leveling and mm. I think for women we get really sensitive and we get really petty and we get jealous easily I think up leveling <laughs> if you just up level based on your own um, speed and your own yes. journey and not compare with someone else so I actually feel it's not a bad idea to unfollow the successful women sometimes or mm. who, who are people who are constantly like marketing telling you how great their life is because sometimes it's not the, it's, it's it may be the opposite of she may be trying to inspire you but if you are not feeling good about yourself you may demoralize yourself yeah. And I think we have to be discerning, right? Like, and see what feels right for us. You know, sometimes I do retract and I kind of unsubscribe and I go back into my cave and other times I'll come out and, you know, I obviously am human. I'll get jealous or be like oh, envious and see, oh, they've done that. And I try to practice that, oh, that woman's doing that. That means it's possible for me. But, you know, there are days when I, I fall down as well. But I think, yeah, it's a good point. Like run our own race, right? And ultimately, 
this is what I've come to realize. Mm. All those people that we idolize, right? Like Marie, for me, it's like Marie Folio, Gabrielle Bernstein, Danielle Laporte, Guru Jagat. She's new on the list. I think she's amazing. These women, it's not about them like having a business that's the appeal. When you see a woman who is like so sure of herself, but she's confident enough to say these are the good parts and these are the bad parts, and they're just so real. Know, they really embody themselves yeah. and they're real. That to me is what I aspire to be. It's mm. not about being them. Perfect. It's about, yeah, no, it's about being that version of that for me. Like they're showing me like, okay, I can be myself. I can be, you know, imperfect. And I am in so many ways. And what I think is successful and what I think a lot of us as women want is just to be comfortable in our own skin and know that we're just giving it the best that we've got and giving what we have to give to the world and being who we really are. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I mean, the difference between Oprah Winfrey, Ellen DeGeneres, mm -hmm. or Michelle Obama, or Marie Folio, yeah. I mean, they have what we have, or they have what we want because they are so sure of themselves. Exactly. And it's like, they are so people most people don't like kim kardashian in the family but the mm. fact is that they are selling themselves they are being themselves yeah and fair play to them that takes courage doesn't it i mean right yeah. and so people like oprah the more like you know like the guru type even tony Robbins, it's just so true to themselves mm. that's what's so attractive exactly exactly so who do you admire out of interest what women are on your like Aspire, I really like admire, the women you aspire I really admire Oprah so during mm. my like season of last year I said oh you know I was catching Oprah behind the scenes right and I'm like mm. oh like damn you know if she shows up every day for the past 25 years and then she becomes a millionaire maybe if I showed up for 25 years every single day I would be a billionaire too yeah and so <laughs> without the team of lighting and the cameraman I did like live videos now we have live videos right every single day for I think two weeks and I'm like, that's it. I couldn't take it. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, that, that life is not for me. So then I realized that platform is Oprah's. Mm. She's supposed to do this every single day. But it's not me. Mm. You see? Yeah. It's not my platform. It's not my way of living. So I got to figure out what my platform is. Mm. Because then you got to be honest with yourself. I can't do this every single day. Showing up 25 for 25 years every single day that's not easy no that's not easy that's yeah. that's really beautiful and so, I think it's amazing that you're like yes that's not the right platform for me and the good thing is you've also tried it like you've actually said okay I'll give it a go I'll give it a go for me and that's what a lot of people don't do is they say, say oh I've got all these different options brainstorm and plan but don't take action and that's what I love about you Elise you always take action and you give it your best shot before you like pivot and change I just try I mean it's it's I mean, I had to give myself a chance, right? What if it works? Yeah. So, and you know, you talk, we talked about Elizabeth Gilbert and she, I think in the creative living, she also said, if you are writing a book for someone else, you are not living for the right reason. I yeah. didn't, she says, and sorry, but I didn't write this book for you. I wrote this book for me. And yeah. even with the Eat, Pray, Love, she didn't expect that it was going to be such a huge thing. And she was struggling for seven years being a bartender, waitress, and all the good stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, seven years, are you able to live like that for seven years before you have that breakthrough? And even the Eat, Pray, Love, she didn't think that it was going to be this huge thing. So you never know, right? And if you, you, don't, know. you don't try, you never know what is going to catapult you to the, like, mega stardom. Yeah, very true. And I think you've, you've got to allow yourself that space to kind of play and have fun and test it out and not necessarily do it for the money and just give it a go. And that's where I think a lot of us forget. We're like, we have to do everything to make money or like yeah. for a return. And yeah. it's like, well, maybe carve out a bit of time just to be play. And then you get into, Tony Robbins talks about this, like a better state. And when you're in a better state, that's when you can, you know, think better. follow strategies and like think better. Um, yeah. And there's a good um, quote that I love from Albert Einstein. And he says that you cannot solve problems on the same level of consciousness that created it. Mm. So if you're in a job that you hate and you can't see a way out or you're in your business and it doesn't feel aligned, it's because you're stuck in that level of consciousness yeah. and you have to change it, whether that's going for a walk or meditating or playing with your kids or doing something purely for the joy of it. 
I think that's an important lesson that it's not just about the return on investment. It's actually about getting into that creative flow and who knows, mm. the pray love may come out of you or, you know, you might be inspired to write a document, like shoot a documentary, who knows, right? Like, yeah, you actually don't know. Like you don't know mm. what will work. Like what is like, oh, you don't know. But if you are in your flow and being your true self, mm. then then that's the best thing. Like mm-hmm. you have, you don't, you don't owe anyone an explanation. Like, so I love what she says. And I told this to people, people like, what? You don't coach or you don't start a business for you, mm. right? But when you start a business, it's not about you. It's about the bigger version. But when you write a book or when you write a blog, you should make it about you, mm. not for someone else because you don't live for someone else. Yeah, that's beautiful. Right. So, but then again, there's a country. If you start a business, like a business to help, most people think it's about them and then they make it all about them. But then it's not about you. You've got to know that it's just not about you. It's about mm. other people. But if you kind of like heal yourself first, right? That's what she says. Do it for you first. Mm. Yeah. It's a good reminder. I love if that you- book. I'm halfway through the book, but she's like straight to the point. I love her. She's also one of my people as well. She's just so herself. And so she embraces who she is and she's, yeah. Yeah. I love how she shows up. She's really amazing. So do it for yourself first. Then the world will basically show up for you. Mm. It starts from the inside. It really does. Yeah. So even your business, you you can only think, you know, you can only not make it about yourself when you know who you are. Mm. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, That's a good point. When you like you're being Oprah, like now she's making like so much money, but she still goes back to the same message. Of course, people like us were like, well, of course it's about the money. You're already a billionaire, so of course you can't do that. <laughs> but it got, if you actually think about how she has started, her principle has never changed. Mm, it's a good point. It's about she always say, "What is your real intention?" Because it always comes back to you. Yeah. So if you start a business just for your own selfish reasons, then it's going to reflect back to you. But mm. if you know who you are. And you know, like you're doing your work continuously and you're putting your work out there to just heal yourself and be yourself. And that's going to reflect back to you. Mm. So, Very true. So these women are just amazing. I love Pam Grout. Like she, oh, yes. She wrote The love. Sank and Grow Rich, 30 Days uh, the E Squared. So these women, they are themselves like what you say. So mm. then they are already the woman that they have always wanted to be. Yeah. And that's when they find success and you don't have to have a certain amount of income or a certain partner or, you know, the material things that we've been taught to want, like that doesn't matter anymore because they're themselves and they're doing what lights them up and brings them joy. And I think that's the ultimate secret, isn't it? Yeah. And if you actually look at their website, right, some of them are pretty crappy. Yeah. Oh, funny. But they don't need a fancy. This again, it's a it's a perfectionist thing. You don't have to have a perfect website to be of service or to put your work out there in the world. That's the thing, what right? We have been taught picture. to we have been taught to look perfect. Yeah. Picture perfect, right? Like the lives that we have all been through that, right? You and I. Mm-hmm. But totally. Then, but then people now are just drawn to the simplicity of who we are. Yeah. Actually, as you talk about that, another woman that I love, I have a massive girl crush on her, is Brene Brown. Mm. And she talks about perfectionism and how perfectionism is like this 20-ton shield. And the she says, because she's a shame researcher, right, at University of Houston. She's from Texas anyway. And, um, yeah, so she says that perfectionist is just like, if I act perfect, do perfect, eat perfect, look perfect, nobody can judge me. But at the end of the day, people are going to judge. They're going to have their opinion. And it's kind of like a false uh, a false, false belief. Self. Yeah. So you might as well just be who you are. Let the people judge if they want to judge. But just be happy in your own skin. Like, ultimately, I think that's the, uh, the end, yeah. end goal. Yeah. So I think Elizabeth and Eckhart, Eckhart Tolle also don't read um, mm. the reviews anymore. Because Eckhart says, mm-hmm. even for him, he says it can be really sticky and yucky. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so when they are birth, they they birth the book and and it's out, it's out. So they kind of like detach. They yeah, don't have a codependent relationship with the book. Like, oh my god, I got to see what this up to yet. Yeah, and I think Liz Gilbert talks about how it's not her baby. She's like, it's that's like the wrong analogy. She's like, it's a creative project. It's out in the world. It's grown up. Bye bye. See you later. It's all yeah. good. It's like 
I love how she put it because I yeah. realized I do have a codependent relationship. I used to have a codependent relationship in my business as well, recovering mm. from that as well. Like, yeah. oh, I've got to be in my business. If without my business, I cannot thrive and this and that. But if you, if you take it personally as your baby, then you're going to take every comment very personally. You're going to take yeah. no personally as well. Mm. Just, and then you don't take action. You don't put yourself out there. You censor your voice and you become vanilla. And then it's like, what's the point? Yeah. So I think you've got to be very clear. When is it about you? When mm. is it not about you? And when it's about just the whole picture? Yeah. Yeah. Very true. So awesome. I know you have to go and pick your daughter. So where can people find you, Siobhan? Uh, they can come and find me at www.theneonlifesociety.com. And I'm on Facebook and Instagram under the same title, Neon Life Society. All right. Thank you so much for this conversation. If you have any questions, please leave us a comment and we'll get back to you. All right. You take care. Goodbye. Bye.